one of the other things that I realized and someone brought to my attention was the fact that I mentioned in the autopilot's sort of warnings interval video that it takes three beeps. Uh, and, and the use case that I used was three consecutive beeps within that session. Uh, what someone brought to my attention was that the same thing happens at any point of using autopilot. So if you start it, you get a beep, you pull the wheel, you stop it, uh, and if it happens again, you still get three beeps. So three beeps is the total number uh, that you get, sort of like three strikes. Three strikes is what you get, um, and then from that point on, it'll lock you out of the system. So if it's three consecutive beeps in one session, or if it's three beeps intermittently as you turn autopilot on and off throughout your trip. And in addition to this, we're also gonna talk about uh, vehicle recognition. As you see on the screen, there's a bus in front of me and depending on how far it goes, and this speaks to what I, I mentioned before in one of the comments, is that there's a certain window that the camera recognizes vehicles. Anything beyond that window, it recognizes it as just an object and, and classifies it as a car. But within that window, it has more room to understand what that is and differentiate between a car, a truck, or a truck-like vehicle like this bus in front of me, uh, and uh, motorcycles as well. So as we wait for the nag to kick in, we also get to see uh, some other things, some other interesting features and things that they sort of fixed along the way, which is the, a much more composed uh, vehicle when dealing with situations where the line, lane markings are unclear. Uh, if everyone, anyone who's driven uh, autopilot before pre-version pre 8 would know that uh, in certain situations the car would get a bit erratic as it searched for line to line. And one of the key things that I think they fixed in version 8 was the ability to for the car to be more composed and handle those situations more smoothly as lines fade away in the view of the uh, camera, uh, the car slowly moves towards, or smoothly I should say, smoothly moves towards the line that it does see versus uh, the more erratic behavior in version 7.1 and 7.0. Uh, so that's one of the things that they fixed, which is good. But as you see here, the, the bus is moving to the right lane. I will pass the bus at some point, but it's still being recognized as a truck, which is, which is what it should do. And what you've seen just now is the vehicle moving side to side, uh, swerving just a little bit, but not as erratic as before, as it's doing the same thing now. It's sort of trying to find its way in the lane. A little unsettling, but not as, as, as unsettling as the, uh, the previous version. So that's something I think they need to fix and need to work on. Uh, the car is definitely swerving a little bit. And this is good conditions. These are pretty good conditions. Uh, pretty clear lane markings and uh, the car is still kind of swerving. So I'm gonna move to this other lane just so this bus can get around me and I don't uh, disturb the bus. Uh, and here's a situation where the bus representative of a truck is next to me, but the car doesn't see it. The car is not visualizing it uh, because the length of the bus is longer than the field of view of the camera. However, what you do see firing off right now is the sensor. Uh, to the right. The sonar sensors to the right uh, continues to register the bus entirely as I pass it. That's not the case with semi-trucks, with, with trailers. It just registers where the wheels are, and then when it gets to the part between the wheelbase of the trailer, it doesn't see that, it doesn't see anything. There's nothing to see because the height of the trailer at that point is at the window level. So there's no sensors at the window level. So therefore it does not see that object and sometimes gets a little bit closer and doesn't maintain its distance like it did just now uh, for the bus. So that's a common scenario. I think that still uh, needs improvement, still needs work. Uh, I think the only solution really there is to put a sensor in the B pillar up high and have that register. And that'd probably be part of a new uh, uh, version 2.0, autopilot 2.0 uh, sensor suite. And just to be clear, Autopilot 2.0 is a new sensor suite that Tesla is developing um, in, in, in tandem or as a part of that 
is the new camera that they're working on, uh, that they're bringing in house, they're, they're building their own chips and all this other hardware. That is Autopilot 2.0. Not what you see right now in version 8. This is what we consider maybe more autopilot 1.5. Waiting for the beep here as I get an indicator. Just waiting for the beep. I'll tug it just to satisfy it uh, and see what happens when we get the next beep. Also notice again the long interval between uh, the time it tells me to uh, take the wheel. I'll move into the middle lane so other people can pass me. Again, not really disturbing the system. Uh, I, I will say that the thing that's not fixed in this particular version, the thing that still needs work, is also the way that the vehicle takes its turns. Um, you may see it in this video, you may not, but as the road turns, the vehicle tends to, to stick to its core programming, which is stay centered within the lane. And if every car was on autopilot, that would actually work. But the reality is, every car is not on autopilot, and there are more humans driving cars than uh, autopilot uh, software driving cars. And as a result, we need to be able to, in this particular instance, conform to the majority. Uh, and I think that the, the solution here is that the car needs to turn, take turns like humans take turns, which is turning in turning in towards the inside of whatever turn you're, you're making, uh, leaving your vehicle biased to the inside line of the turn. So if you're turning right, you're more, your car is more biased to the inside right line. If you're turning left, your car is more biased to the inside left line. And what that does is create a nice even distance between you and the other car because the other car would typically do that. That's, the, just, that's just the way humans drive. That's the way race, cars drive, race car drivers drive. Uh, and that's just, that's just the way people drive. And what winds up happening is, uh, because the car doesn't drive that way, you'll have a scenario like you see right now where the road is sort of bending to the left. You see the car in front of me staying more biased to the inside line. However, the car, the Tesla, is going towards the outside line and trying to stay centered. And what that creates is an awkward situation where you become a little bit too close to the person in the right lane as they take the turn because they're turning inside and as the next warning comes up here, I'm going to uh, wait for the beep, then ignore it. And then I'm going to take, take control just to show you what happens. All right, I'm taking control of that. And I've satisfied that one. So that's the second beep, a.k.a. the second strike. Uh, and if I continue to do this, the next one is going to disable the system as well. So it's not just the scenario that I showed where it's just the consecutive beeps over and over again in one session. It's consecutive beeps in an entire trip. So from the time you pull it out of park and go into drive, you get three strikes uh, and to, to be able to take control. And just jumping back on the other topic, as you see, I take the turn here, I'm turning wide. If you look at the road, you look at the car on the screen, I'm turning wide as opposed to turning in. And if someone was next to me, I'd be uncomfortably close to them. Uh, and you'll see this car right here is a good example right here. As this car starts to turn in, he's biased towards the inside left line. I'm going wider, so I'm gonna be closer to him. And uh, yeah, he reacts now. You see the sensor go off, and here's my third warning here. Uh, if I get to wait to the beep, it's gonna disable and lock me out, so I'll be able to take control. So there we go. That's the three strikes that I got. It didn't have to be uh, in succession. It didn't have to be in a single uh, warning session, that is, meaning the screen is flashing. I just continually ignore one, two, three. It can be intermittent. But as soon as I pull out of, out of park and go into drive, I get three strikes or three audible beeps uh, before it disables and locks me out of the system. So that's the example I have for you.